This is a Daily Purpose Bible Study and Devotional, a podcast by Our Given Purpose, where we bridge the gap between revival and spiritual maturity. I am Tori Slaughter, your host and Bible study teacher. Let's dive into today's topic passage coming to us from Ephesians chapter 6. Welcome to Bible study titled, Obedience in All Things, a Soul and Spirit Perspective. Well, greetings, brothers and sisters. Today we delve into the insightful words of the Apostle Paul found in Ephesians 6, verses 1 through 9, where he illuminates the spiritual aspects of obedience and how it benefits our entire being, our soul and spirit. So as we explore these verses, let us gain a deeper understanding of the reasons behind the Apostle Paul's guidance and the transformative power of obedience. Let's begin by opening the scriptures to Ephesians chapter 6, and let's read verses 1 through 3, which sets the stage for this spiritual blueprint. It says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Here the Apostle Paul emphasizes obedience within the family structure as a foundational principle. The spiritual aspect of this obedience is evident in the command to honor our parents. It's not merely about following rules, but about recognizing the divine order established by God. Obedience to parents is a reflection of our obedience to the Lord, which benefits our souls and spirits by fostering an environment of respect, an environment of love, and an environment of harmony. Let's move down to verse 4, where it says, Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Now here, the Apostle Paul highlights the role of fathers in nurturing the spiritual growth of their children. The spiritual aspect of this obedience lies in the responsibility to provide a foundation of godly values and teachings. Obedience to this command benefits our souls and spirits by fostering an environment of spiritual growth where children can develop a personal relationship with God. In verses 5 through 9, this addresses the relationship between masters and slaves, and it reads, Slaves, Obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. And masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven, and there is no favoritism with him. So Paul's guidance extends to the workplace, where the spiritual aspects of obedience is crucial. Obedience is not just about following orders, but about demonstrating Christ-like character in our intentions. Obedience benefits our souls and spirits by cultivating a culture of fairness, respect, and unity, reflecting the values of God's kingdom. Now, I want to give some reasons behind Paul's guidance, and the first is spiritual harmony. Paul's guidance emphasizes the importance of obedience within families and workplaces to create an environment of spiritual harmony. When we obey these principles, we align ourselves with God's design for order and unity. The second reason behind Paul's guidance is reflection of God's character. Obedience, both as children and parents, slaves and masters, reflects the character of God. It demonstrates humility, respect, and love, and this mirrors the attributes of our Heavenly Father. And the third reason behind Paul's guidance is spiritual growth. Obedience nurtures spiritual growth, allowing us to draw closer to God and develop a deeper understanding of His will for our lives. 
It benefits our souls and spirits by fostering spiritual maturity. So to wrap up this Bible study section, we we see how Ephesians 6, 1 through 9 reveals the spiritual aspects of obedience and its profound benefits for our souls and spirits. It emphasizes the importance of obedience within families and workplaces as a reflection of God's character and a catalyst for spiritual growth. When we obey these principles, we honor the Lord and create an atmosphere of harmony and unity. Amen? Amen. Let us pause and hear a brief announcement before we get into today's devotional. Hey there, Purpose Enthusiasts, this is Tori, and we are here to bridge the gap between revival and spiritual maturity. It is a privilege to manage this daily ministry. And God said, I didn't have to do it alone. I am joined by Melinda Douglas, Robin Lambert, Lisa Gantt, Christina Price, Irvine St. Belus, Diana L.W. Coleman, Sheila Arrington, Lindsay Capron, Kendra Dublin, Detria Moore, Emmy Michael O. Stephanie Bright. Reason A. Chandler. Joshua Slaughter. Megan Martin. Roderick Slaughter. Tiffany Langston. Follow us as we follow Jesus and be renewed each day as you listen to the Bible teachings and devotionals that align with the Bible in a year plan. We are your go-to podcast and YouTube source for daily inspiration, insight, and encouragement. Don't miss the opportunity to elevate your journey and tell a friend they can come along with you. Now, let's transition back into A Daily Purpose. Hi, this is Amina Maybank. I'm a minister, author, podcast host, encourager, and most importantly, a child of God. As a contributing writer for Our Given Purpose, I hope you will gain more insight and inspiration from my devotionals, my experiences, and my testimony. Thank you for making a daily purpose Bible study and devotional part of your routine and allowing me, Amina Maybank, to be a blessing to you as I walk this journey with you. Day 271, Put on the Full Armor of God by Contributing Devotional Writer, Amina Maybank. When we think of the word armor, we think of a soldier or a warrior, someone who quite often engages in war. Armor is a defensive covering for the body, usually made of metal worn by warriors in battle. In Ephesians 6, the Apostle Paul tells us to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, he knew that as followers of Christ, we would engage in spiritual battles daily, whether we want to or not. This armor that he speaks of is purposed to enable us to withstand in the evil day and to continue standing. Standing on the word of God, standing on the truth of God, and standing on the faithfulness of God. There have been plenty of times when I felt defeated, hopeless, and unsure of God's faithfulness in my life. I can honestly say that during those difficult times, I didn't always have on the full armor of God. The Apostle Paul speaks of the evil day. The evil day can refer to any moment you are under spiritual attack. It is in those moments when we need to be absolutely sure that we are fully protected and covered by the armor of God. If we are not covered, we become vulnerable to Satan's schemes and strategies. We may find ourselves fainting spiritually, giving up on God, and falling back to a life of sin. That is why the armor of God is so important in our spiritual journey. Dear friends, What is the armor of God that we must put on daily? It is the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit. The belt of truth is God's truth. We should hold it close to us and allow it to surround us, especially when we are under spiritual attack. 
We must be sure that the lies of the enemy don't penetrate our hearts and minds and that we stand on the truth of who God is and what he's able to do no matter how bad things may seem. The breastplate serves as protection for some of the most important parts of the body. Therefore, if a soldier does not wear their breastplate, they are vulnerable to an attack that could result in instant death. In other words, if we do not protect ourselves with righteousness, we open ourselves up to attack from the enemy and can fall into sin. The shoes of the gospel of peace Our shoes equip us to walk through rough areas. In the same way, having hope in Jesus helps us walk through the trials we face and still share the good news with others. The shield of faith. Our faith can guard us during trials in the same way a shield would during battle. For example, when doubt creeps in and we question God's love, our faith in Christ will protect us. The helmet serves as protection for the head. When we put on the helmet of salvation, we can avoid sinful thoughts and understand what is good and true. And finally, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. When sharpened, the sword could pierce through just about anything, making it a very dangerous weapon. His Word is the ultimate truth, and we can find confidence in knowing it is our greatest weapon. Dear friends, may we be encouraged to put on the whole armor of God today and fight. As this battle is already won and the victory is yours, thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in Christ. Hallelujah. Day 271. Put on the full armor of God by contributing devotional writer Amina Maybank. Amen, amen, amen. Let us put on the full armor of God. Saints, are you prepared and ready for this day? I hope that you are and that you use a daily purpose Bible study and devotional to initiate a conversation about God's word. We are deeply grateful to you for sharing this podcast with your friends and family. We thank our many sponsors and our Patreons whose donations help us to provide this valuable content. If you feel led to contribute financially and become part of the Our Given Purpose ministry, please visit OurGivenPurpose.com. Your contribution will help us spread God's message and connect with people all over the world. Remember, you have seeds to sprinkle and don't lose sight of the ones falling on you. Where will they grow? By the road and shallow soil in the thickets? Or will they find a home in good soil to flourish and produce a good work? What God has begun in you, he will complete. Have faith and be bold. You've just heard a daily purpose, Bible study, and devotional, a podcast by Our Given Purpose. Go ahead and share it with a friend right now.